Hello everyone, welcome back again. My name is Jesse and in this wonderful and exciting tutorial, we are exploring a very nice framework called Data Button. So Data Button is a very nice tool that allows you to be able to build, distribute and collaborate on your apps. It's very, very powerful and it's built on top of great giants like Streamlit, Schedule and then Pandas. So let's see how to work with Data Button or Data Button, anyhow you pronounce it. Okay, so the idea behind data button is that with that you can build something like this. If I come back here, you are going to have all your apps there. So I have different apps. I can have different apps in one instance. I can also work on data and also have scheduled jobs, right? So if I come back to the original one from the official website, you have the heat map, which is another app. So all the apps can be grouped together. You can see that this, this app is actually streamlit behind the scene. As you can see, if you're familiar with streamlit, you can see that this is streamlit, right? And then you come back again to the data. You can load the data, right? So let's refresh it. And then you can see the busy stuff you can do with the data, right? Very cool. Out of the box, you can filter stuff, right? You can also check for jobs, schedule jobs, and you can see those jobs here also. So it is built on top of Grid Giant. So with data button, you can quickly build apps, right? And deploy them. And the apps are built on top of Streamlit. You can work on jobs and they are built on top of schedule the, the python library you can also work with data frames which is behind the scene working with pandas and machine learning models as you wish right then with data button you can quickly have the option to deploy it on docker or kubernetes very cool so it allows you to quickly build apps jobs schedule jobs and then work with data new models and also to deploy them so let's start from scratch. So in case you don't have it, you can just go back again to your terminal. So this was the previous one that I'm running. So let's stop this one and then let's start. So I come back here, then I'm going to create a new project. So in case you don't have it, just go with pip install data button. That's how to install it on your system, right? So automatically installed, I've already installed it. Then just check for the help. You're going to see how to run data button. So it goes with build. You can build a project. You can create a data button project. You can deploy. You can download. You can initialize a new project. You can save. You can start. You can see a lot of things. Right. So let's start with it. So I'm just going to first of all create my first project. So data button. Then create. Then keep it. Then need to look at this new project two. Right. So the name of the project is new project 2 so it's downloading the template then you are going to have this option here so you to start the deployment server just go with data button start to deploy just go with data button deploy and this is going to go to this app this place see that we have nest dot button so if you deploy it, it's going to come here then we can also have the options of how to run it so cd into the project you created so let's start so i'll cd into my new project 2 then if I come back here, you can see that we have my data button.json, my main.py file, the readme, and then the comment. So let's start with it. So pip install dash r requirement. It's going to install all the things that we need for this particular application, right? For this project. Now let's open it with VS Code. You can use Sublime if you want. And if I come back here and I check it out, we have the name of the project and then the things that have been excluded and also have the requirement of tst we have the data button fully there we have the readme after the boss right very cool so as i said with data button you can quickly deploy your streamlit apps your jobs and then the rest so let's start seven so i'm just going to go back again and go with data button start if i go with this start automatically going to spin up based on what we have here a very simple app for us right so if i go back again so it's starting data button and this is how it's going to work so we have the apps the jobs and then in case there's data there and there's a default one right so in case you want to get to the app you just go to this one right so if i go back to this route i copy this one here so there's the old one let's copy it here it's automatically going to bring me to the main dashboard right so we just going to have only one app data and then jobs then because we don't have any job this is streamlet from the scene so if i go back and i check it out you can see that this is actually streamlet if i 
go back here. Let's forget to show you that this streamlets here, but you will see that it's having the SDSD there right, later on. But you see that streamlet, so it's built behind behind the single streamlet. Oh, it's even here, mirror the streamlet. Right? Very cool. So that means that it's very powerful. Perfect. So all the features of streamlet can be seen within the later button. Perfect. You can also move to the app by clicking on it. Right. Or you can just go back to this URL here, copy this one, and then instead of the main dashboard, you can close on this. You can just press the go to see the streamlet app itself. Right. Very cool. You can also modify them. So the moment you just do save, you can see that we have all of these things already there, right? So if I go back to the streamlet app, I can also add some stuff there. So let's go and say SD. Let's give a name or let's give it like say data so raw and let's call this first name right first name and then i'm going to give it like sd.title or test input so all these things of stream network so enter first name so enter first name right and then it works so sd.write if I save it automatically, it's automatically going to take the changes. You can see that just here, All right? So, just save. See, it is working perfectly well. If I come back again to the main dashboard, which is this dashboard here, and I refresh it, you see we have it here, and the changes are there, All right? Very cool. You can also add multiple apps, All right? So, if I go back here, I can also add another app. Copy this. And then put it in right so you see that the route is hello and that was the route we had here at the top here right i can also change it to a different route so let's change this route to let's say about and let's change i prefer to change the name the function together with the route it is still going to work anyway but let's make it like the same about and then let's give it so hello data button so this is going to be about Data button. Right, so let's give it us. Yeah, so let's save it. So if I go back and I save it, so we have the first one. Because we have two of the apps, if I refresh it, we're going to have this old one. Let me close this so that we don't get confused. If I refresh it, so we have the first one, the hello, right? And then the other one, right? It's working. Don't worry. It's giving us this internal server error, but it's going to find it. Perfect. Right. So I can also come back again. As I said, you can just go back to the route, which was this route here. And if I change this from here to about, then we have it here, right? So the hello data button. So the about option. The about route is there. Right. I think this is something that we have to. I don't know. We have to figure out how to work with it, but you can do a lot of things with it right very very cool very nice you can see that we have multiple apps there but i think the recommended way that most of the time you have to at least put all your apps under one place right so that is one of the ways so if i save it and then i come back here refresh so we ha have all my apps there. so it's better you put all the apps in one place and then all the data in the other place right perfect so that is something very cool so i can also add all the sidebars so st dot Say let's give like say my menu. I give our famous sidebar so sidebar dot select box to menu, and then we can just go back here, put our list of let's say home, and then about right, and it's going to work. So if I go back here, automatically this is it right. So the home just there. Right? So everything that works in Streamlit works with the data pattern. Very cool, right? That's something very nice. Okay, so that is something very cool. You can also work on the schedule jobs, also by specifying the jobs here, right? Put the jobs here and it's still going to work. And then you can also work on the data. So that is for data button, right? For the apps and the jobs. Now you can also go work on the deployment to Docker and Kubernetes. So by default, once you do that, if I go back to the main app itself, if I check the data button hidden folder, we have the apps. And it's all the apps that have been there. So we said this is my app here, right? The function that was on the app, 
this color is the one that is shown here perfect and if i go back within the same hidden directory we have docker so you automatically have your docker file so it automatically give you this right so that in case you want to run this on docker i can just build this image and then run it perfectly right the same way in case you also want to do the same thing with on kubernetes you can also have your deployment.yml file you're going to have your kind deployment right if you want to deploy it right together with the right way so out of the world it configures everything for you you don't need to do or think about these things and you can also have the customization also yeah all right and then my pens for everything for kubernetes is so there very cool right together with your services right very very nice so that is something very cool with data button so let's recap so with data button it allows you to be able to quickly build apps which is put on top of streamlet to schedule jobs which is put on top of schedule and then to work with data frames and then your machine learning models and you can easily deploy them with the car and then kubernetes so in case i want to deploy it you have to first of all go back and then let's stop this if you want to deploy it you need to create an account right on this particular service so if i go back to here you have to create an account here in order to deploy it right it's free so just quit have an account and then you can now deploy it straight away so data button deploy right then you deploy that so thank you for watching this tutorial see you in the next session as we explore more see you in another time stay blessed bye